So I think we're uh, going to about to begin. And I want to thank everyone. Uh, oh, maybe it's not. It's not. I didn't even ask you. Is it okay? Okay. So I want to thank Woodstock Community TV and Jared Gunnell, who's uh, really doing a fantastic job uh, spreading the music even further than this local community. And I uh, welcome, as usual, Tim Gilmore and Peter Concilio, who, have, uh, who are very happily, I, I said that you want to play uh, Love Supreme, you want to try it. And I think Peter wasn't sure, and Tim seemed to jump right in. And then uh, we've all jumped in, and it's been uh, a, a wonderful uh, creative project for us to try to uh, come to terms in some way with, uh, with this music. And uh, Peter's going to talk a little bit more about that. But we're going to start off, and I, I guess the whole evening we have programs, which we don't usually have, and we've got to thank Peter for that. And we're doing, um, we're going to start with a song by McCoy Tyner called Walk Spirit, Talk Spirit. And I didn't know that song. It's, uh, it's, it's apparently it's pretty well known, but I had not heard of it. And uh, Tim again found, found it and brought it in, and uh, it took me a while to stumble through it, but I've come to really like it. <laughs> so we're going to start with that. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Whoops. <laughs>
here. It was a wonderful composition by McCoy Tyner, Walk Spirit, Talk Spirit. And we're going to play, we're going to get into this uh, Love Supreme Suite. And when we were talking about this in rehearsal about uh, what is it? You know, what is this music and what are we doing for it? And, and Peter starts saying uh, sentence after sentence that I thought were really good. So I said, why don't you give a talk about it at the, at the, uh, Concert, so I'm really happy to uh, turn the microphone or the over to uh, Peter to talk about the his sure his his everybody that will uh, hear this could say something about it, but it's nice to uh, I, and I like that I like everybody's opinion on the I like to hear I'm looking forward to hearing you, what Peter says. Yeah, me too. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. No pressure, Pete. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in 1957, John Coltrane had become a great player. He had played with Susie Gillespie. He had worked with um, all kinds of great musicians. And he had a gig with Miles Davis. But he was strung out. He was had done a lot of alcohol and uh, heroin. Mm. And so Miles went up to him on a gig in 1957 and said, I can't keep you. You're, you're too strung up. I, I don't know when you're going to play. I don't know what you're going to play. So Train was devastating. He, uh, he experienced that year, though, what he called a spiritual awakening. Um, his grandfathers, um, both his maternal and paternal grandfathers, were ministers in the Black Zion Methodist Church. So he had grown up playing clarinet in the church and w with his family. And so his sister, Mary, who he stayed with all of, who stayed with him most of his life, said that he had the spirit in him from the time he was little. In 1963, he went upstairs in his house in Long Island and would not come down for hours and hours and hours. And his wife believed that she was supporting something he was doing musically, but she didn't understand what. And after days and days and days of, of playing, practicing all by himself and writing, he came down and he said, I have it. And she didn't question it. She was an incredible lady. And he took his 60, 1964, he took his quartet into the studio and he recorded what he called his spiritual declaration. 33 minutes long, a four part suite, which he titled A Love Supreme. McCoy Tyner told the interviewer later that they even turned the lights down in the studio for the, to get the feeling of the music. And then, Train, who didn't like to rehearse, played it with the group, one take, and just told them, listen hard and be in the moment. Mm. The simple motif that you will hear, the boys will sing and we will play, appears throughout as the entire piece everywhere. The critic Lewis Porter said that he plays it in all 12 keys, mm -hmm. which he does. And in fact, Sonny, one of the rehearsals, Sonny played it in all 12 keys. <laughs> the simple motif. Um, and uh, in 1957, he was ordained at a as a minister in the church. Um, the the story that I didn't know, that I've learned since spending time studying, is that during the period that he was going through his spiritual awakening, he moved away from Christianity and studied Hinduism, Zoroastrianism, Buddhism. He studied the Vedas. And he came to believe that God is sound and that performing music is a devotional act. <clears throat> and so he spent 
the rest of his career searching for spiritual truths <coughs> through his music. So after A Love Supreme, he hired Ravi Shankar, and you remember the, the people of the 60s who were into India, India music from the East, and hired um, several musicians to work with him. And he, he said, he studied the, the Vedanta, the electric, electric intellectual school, the Bhagavad Gita, went on and on and on, until he finally said, I believe in all religions. There is no religion that is separate from God. Um, and so, <clears throat> the word Om expresses in the Eastern religions the unity of the divine with the individual. And this powerful expression of divine longing is what, in, is what characterizes his music until the end of his life. So he made albums called India, uh, Self Reflection, a, a whole bunch of albums about trying to reach this fullness and oneness with unity of, in the divine. Um, and so at the end, when you listen to his music toward his, his death, he's losing himself in, in his performance. And people said he was enormously humble. You know, one of the problems that we have as performing musicians is, where do you let your ego go and just let the music happen? Let it flow through you. Um, he said, my music is the spiritual expression of what I am, of my faith, my knowledge, and my being. My goals remain the same, uplifting people as I can to inspire them to realize more and more their capacity for living meaningful lives. All praise to God, the album is a humble offering to him in an attempt to say thank you. And so, playing train, playing this piece is is a difficult, as you can imagine, even though the piece does not uh, require uh, extremely difficult, very hip deck of technical stuff. It requires something else. Um, and so we, we're going to try our damnedest to, to play this piece and make some music on it. It's in four parts. The first part is called Acknowledgement, the second Resolution, the third pursuance and the fourth song. Now, if you get a hold of the album, Love Supreme, the last piece song, he wrote a poem to go with every note he played. So, if you sit with the with the with the song with the, with the lyrics, you hear the whole song, the psalm itself. That's so I tried. Difficult. You left. And uh, moving, very moving. I think is that is it? Oh, yeah. 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 There it is. Yeah, I think he's got that on the. I think he wants it inside on the album. Yeah. So that's all I have to say. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, everybody. For I realize too that um, uh, it's great to um, we couldn't have played this song without you. Every everybody that came in, we wouldn't have wanted to even. So it's uh, that's really a, a great contribution, and it's fun to try to play a song like this. And can you imagine another place where we could have done it? You know, it's not maybe you could try real hard, but uh, <laughs> this felt like uh, the natural. So thank you. We're going to take a. a a brief intermission, as it says on the program, and we'll come back and we have uh, you know, three or four more uh, songs to, to play for you. But go get some fresh air. And, yeah, yeah. A couple uh, albums after Love Supreme, Coltrane came out with this uh, record called the Crescent. And on the record Crescent, there was a song called Crescent, and there was this, another song called Wise One. And I, I remember at the time thinking that uh, those, those had a deep spiritual feeling too, maybe even more than uh, Love Supreme. And that, um, uh, so we picked a couple, of the, we're, gonna do, we're gonna do the song Wise One, which is another example of a wonderful Coltrane composition where there's a, a melody that's out of time and then he uh, supplies a new set of chord changes for which there's no melody written. And you improvise on those chords, and the, and they're in a different rhythm. So it's, it's a it's a great idea, and uh, we all ought to pick up on that <laughs> yeah. for our compositions in all our, all fields.
Yeah, nice song. Another great tune. Uh, I'm going to play one that uh, that I wrote. Uh, it's called Soul Brother. And it's, uh, I guess it's not, not this, exactly the same spirit of as all the other ones of the evening. But it's just in title. It's, uh, it is written for a good for a good friend of mine from a long time ago. So let's, um, two, one, oops. One, two, one.
reggae feeling for the.
No, we've, we've got a sort of a going home, going home tune when we were rehearsing these things. We thought uh, the thing, all these spiritual songs, we decided to do Dance of the Infidels, a, a Bud Powell composition from the 1940s, or maybe 1950s, Dance of the Infidels. So we'll go, that'll be our going home tune. One, two, uh, three, three, three. <laughs> Thanks everybody. That's our that's our music for the evening. The dance of the infidels and uh, thank you.